Well, hey guys, welcome back to the vlog. Just wash my face with the So By Me Beta Panthenol Repair Cleansing Gel. Coming in with my Timeless Q10 Serum. Last night I did my hand slugging where I coat my hands in Vaseline before I go to bed and cover them up with the white cotton gloves. It makes a huge difference for hand eczema, but just the look of your hands in general. It makes them a lot like softer and glowy and dewy. And then I do that Gold Bond eczema hand cream throughout the day. That's the thing with hand eczema, you, just, you have to be like constantly putting moisturizer on. Like anytime you wash your hands, you gotta moisturize, but I think it's a good habit to get into moisturizing your hands. And of course, if you're gonna be out in the sun, putting sunscreen on them, they are exposed to a lot of things. We're always focused on facial skincare, but hands, hands are just if not more exposed to things because you're touching stuff in addition to all the environmental exposures they get. Uh, speaking of environmental exposure defense, I'm coming in with the Dermatology Universal Tint. If you missed yesterday's vlog, I finished up the Isentree Hyaluronic Acid Watery Sun Gel and the Can Make Mermaid UV Gel. So I'm back on an old favorite of mine that I purchased from the Amazonian. If you have never used this sunscreen, it's tinted and it's fragrance free it is a hybrid sunscreen so it has zinc and it has some organic filters um in my opinion for my skin tone there is no cast the tint is not orangey at all it has niacinamide and i love this i mean it's like a favorite for me the only thing is that it's not water resistant but this brand makes some water resistant sunscreens that are pretty good so there's that easy to tolerate around the eyes i'm looking very citrusy summer this is a workout tank i got in a three pack from the amazonian i have it paired with the crz running shorts these are so comfortable they're kind of like a black and gray camo super duper comfy Oh my gosh, I just dropped some ice cubes. Does anyone else find it so infuriating when you drop ice on the floor and it shatters into shards? It's so annoying because it's like kind of hard to pick it all up, but it starts melting and it's just going to make a mess. It's, it's very annoying. I know this is like a mild inconvenience in the realm of things, but it, it's, it's like when your sock gets wet, that level of nuisance. almost dumped that on the counter and that would have made me very angry <laughs> at myself. What a mess that would have been. Coffee grounds all over the counter and melting ice on my floor. Whew, let's hope this doesn't turn into a day of chaos. Yeah, I love the dishwasher. It's almost time for the FabFitFun customization, you guys. Speaking of which, Still using my little pitcher and cups this summer, and I've been using my Lily Pulitzer mugs as little snack bowls. Aren't they cute? I'm just leaving snacked here. I recently got this little bento box on the Amazonian. It's so cute for lunches on the go. It has a little strap. You have two compartments there, and then utensils and then snacks there you just can't rely on airports for food so i got that to have next time i travel for my little carry-on food bag yeah there were a lot of good deals on prime day this year um i saw actually my kasari kettle i think was on prime day sale this kettle is really good i need to i need to give it a facial <laughs> i've had it for Going on over over a year now, still going strong. I use it at least once a day, if not twice a day. Feel free to judge, but I don't care. I'm firing up the pumpkin bourbon butter candle. I know what you're thinking. It's too early for a fall candle. If you missed yesterday's vlog, I purchased this at Big Lots yesterday for the low, low price of $6.99. And I thought I would save it, but I'm not. Why save things when you could light them today? <laughs> I'm justifying my actions because I wanna know what it smells like, how it is. If it's good, then I'm gonna run back to Big Lots and buy a few more because they didn't have that many. Plus, that way I can report back to you guys 
let you know if it's worth running to your big lots and getting one or not. Pumpkin bourbon butter. I love fall, most of all, scented candle. $6.99 at big lots. So this is a new um, coffee that I got on iHerb. It's not Raven's Brew. It's pretty good. Um, it's, I forget the name of it. Hi well, guys, it's much later in the day and I'm heading out to get some fresh air. I wanna go to the park, but this park up here that I often go to, they have a no camera policy. And it's like, I film in stores all the time and sometimes I'm worried that, you know, an employee is gonna come up to me and say like, please don't film in here. <clears throat> Cause that can happen. It, it almost never happens to me in Houston. It's only ever happened to me like, in California to be specific but um, yeah most of the time 99.99% of the time employees and, and retailers they don't care if I'm filming so imagine my surprise when I was taking pictures in this park over here and the park security guard came up and said you can't take pictures in the park it's a new policy and um, I guess the reason, which makes sense sadly, is that people were doing these over the top gender reveal things or like photo shoots in this public park and like leaving a mess of like confetti or you know just taking over the whole park with all sorts of photo shoot stuff and so they made a policy where you can't take photos but they took it to the level of like you can't like shoot a selfie. I mean they have a guard there. Um, who like comes up and like tells you please don't take a picture it's I can't say as I have ever experienced anything of that sort it it threw me for a loop I, I have to say it threw me for a loop oh speaking of loop I am I don't know why what has that has to do with loop but I'm headed into Whole Foods I have not been in a Whole Foods in a while now I don't know if this is fake news or not so don't quote me on this because I think I heard it on Instagram, but I heard that Whole Foods is gonna launch some new thing where you can pay with the palm of your hand. That seems a little bit too invasive in my opinion. Like I don't do, um, I don't do the Apple Pay. I don't trust Apple with like to be a wallet for me. I just don't, I mean, if they can't make power cords that don't fray, why am I gonna why am I gonna trust you with my bank account? So I don't do Apple Pay. I refuse um, to participate in Apple Pay. I'm stubborn with a lot of things. Like you know, there are those you know kind of old timers who refuse to use the internet. I don't. I honestly don't know how people like that survive, but they do exist. They do exist. I, I think I'm gonna be like that with certain things because I just don't want to engage and it's not that I don't want to use new skills learn new skills I certainly do I'm very into learning new stuff I don't like being controlled by all these technologies speaking of people who don't who don't engage in technology and I don't know how they function there's a dermatologist that I worked for when I was uh, a medical student doing research for who refused to use the computer. I do not know how, well, I know how he had people do it for him. It was mind blowing. And this wasn't someone who decided to be that way and was like doing their own thing in private practice. This was somebody at a university, like a major academic center and where you would assume that it would be necessary to use a computer because in academics like you're supposed to be doing like research and all and this guy was very prolific in research like he's a, like very well published does not use computers like had research assistants to make presentations for him to type th it was like how have you gotten this far in life i i don't know i mean like highly intelligent person but refused to participate in like computers because when I was getting ready to go do be a research assistant for this dermatology professor and work with him I can remember emailing him and being like he must be really busy I'm probably not going to hear back and I didn't hear back because I, I assumed he was really busy well when I get to the rotation to start doing the research rotation 
come to find out, the reason I didn't get a response was because he doesn't check email because he doesn't use computers. Like when you're a professor or you're in a, employed by a university, they give you a university email. Like you're required, like they give it to you. It's just what you have. So that's why I emailed because that was on the con point of contact. And he, like, that's why I never heard back. Come to find out, he has like a research assistant log into the email episodically and answer things. But this is the same research assistant that also has to like do all these other like hand-holding for, I just, maybe at this point he's finally decided to use, to use the internet, but I, I couldn't believe that somebody could be so successful in life on a day, like operating on a day-to-day -day basis um, in the professional world in such a research heavy setting and not use a computer. It, it baffled me. So yeah, that I felt, but I couldn't say anything because this guy actually ended up writing me a letter to get into dermatology. <laughs> so I knew I needed that. So I just kind of had to pretend like everything was wonderful. That's always one thing that I hate about, like it's very hard for me, but I do it. It's hard for me to bite my tongue sometimes when I see things that are like I want to comment on that I know I need to keep my mouth shut like I've learned as an adult but when I was a kid I would just say whatever came to my mind like children do but um I have a hard time like if I'm really familiar with somebody um I'll be a lot more blunt um but you know as an adult I've learned that to curtail that especially around new people or in a professional setting I just keep my mouth shut but if I'm really friendly with you and I'm very familiar with you I can be so blunt and if I see, if there's something weird like that, I'm going to call you out. <laughs> but at the time, I certainly had to keep my mouth shut. And I can just remember like being like, gosh, this is so infuriating that somebody is this stubborn about adapting to, to technology. Comment below on if you guys know anybody like that. Anyway, I'm wearing that NARS blush. It came in a FabFitFun box. My video is going to go up on my Nordstrom anniversary sale review. So you guys should have already seen that if you were interested in it at that point. But this blush is in that sale and I went ahead and ordered it. And I also ordered some other things that I'll show you guys when they come in. Looks like the 365 brand has some new products. This Acne Care Moisturizer with Botanical Extracts. Salicylic Acid Leave-On product. Glycerin and Aloe. Those are hydrating ingredients that may help with the dryness but it has orange peel extract. That can be irritating. Melon fruit and grapefruit. You gotta be careful of those. And vanilla is fragrance, but interesting, 1029. Um, what's in there? Acne Care Charcoal Cleanser. 2% salicylic acid. This one also has fragrance in it, but uh, charcoal can kind of be helpful too for oiliness. I see they came out with some micellar waters too, or a micellar water. I don't know if this is new. Micellar water can help break up makeup, but I just don't find that it's very easy around the eyes to use. Like I have issues, you guys know, with micellar water getting my mascara off effectively. Green tea leaf extract is antioxidants. Witch hazel is an astringent. Some people who have acne find it beneficial. Gluconolactone is a polyhydroxy acid. This also has the grapefruit extract in it, so you gotta be aware of that. Facial toner with rose in it. That's just fragrance, despite what people say. These are the 365 versions of Cetaphil. I've never actually tried these, I don't think, but um, they don't have any fragrance in them. That one doesn't, at least the gentle one. Does it daily? The daily has niacinamide, like the new Cetaphil Daily Facial Cleanser. It looks like they updated the formula. No fragrance. And then there's the moisturizing lotion. This is nice, very similar to Cetaphil. Ooh, this is new, the clarifying seaweed jelly mask. Seaweed is a great humectant. It has anti-inflammatory compounds. This also has willow bark in it and allantoin. Those are both anti-inflammatory. It does have fragrance in it. How, how are you supposed to use this? Rinse off with warm water. Hmm. There's also, oops, a nourishing spirulina jelly mask. This has bakuchiol in it, which is an antioxidant. It may help stabilize some ingredients. A pomegranate jelly mask? That's new too. Pomegranate, you gotta be careful if you're sensitive to fruit extracts, but it may have some anti-inflammatory properties. 
This Yes to Avocado has had this fragrance-free cream cleanser and eye cream for a while. I have not tried those. What? Now I've seen the crystal deodorant, but a mist version of it? This seems like a stretch, you guys. This seems like a stretch. Thai, Thai crystal deodorant was created on the belief that people deserve a better deodorant. Mineral salts, purified water. I don't know about that. I mean, I suppose if you use the crystal and you find that effective, then maybe you'd find the spray. See, there is a crystal up here. It looks like they have a stick form of this Thai brand. The nice thing about this is it's pretty mild on the skin. Like, I don't have any problem with people using this. Now, does it work? I'm not so sure. People say it works. Looks like Mad Hippie came out with a sunscreen. Ultra Sheer Body SPF, water resistant. Sea Buckthorn, one of my favorite ingredients for an emollient. Non-nano, I don't know about that though. Fear mongering type marketing. There's nothing wrong with nano zinc. Egyptian Magic, a few years ago I reviewed this. Um, it's okay, honestly. A lot of times they sell this at Costco. Olive oil, beeswax, honey, yeah, and propolis. Those are all hydrating, but if you're allergic to fragrance, you have to be careful with those ingredients because they can cross-react. So I realize I'm a bit of a hypocrite because I frequently point out that it's a good idea to have a humidifier in the bedroom for dry skin and you know they're great. And I have one, I run it in the winter months. However, it's summer and the humidity is high. So I actually have a dehumidifier here in my living room. Look at how much water it has sucked out. It's almost full. I've had this for a couple of months now. It's super quiet. It automatically turns off when it's full. I'm gonna go ahead and empty it. Yeah, it turns off when it's full. Look at all that water that just comes out of the air. See, it's got a little mechanism there where it can detect the water level and just turn off. All that water in less than a week has been sucked out of the air. And just pour it out here for the plants to enjoy. But the reason I decided to get this in here is because I feel like the air gets super drafty and having the dehumidifier makes it a lot more comfortable in here. Okay, you guys, update on pumpkin bourbon butter. It is wonderful. It has a great throw. It's a lovely scent. Highly suggest it if you have big lots in your area. I mean, for the price, the smell is so good and I don't think you'll be disappointed. Am I gonna run back to Big Lots and get another one? I am tempted, I honestly am tempted. Um, but I wouldn't say this is super unique. I know I will be able to find a similar scented candle closer to the fall season, mm, but I am still tempted to go back to Big Lots and snag another one. You definitely get a hint of apple butter with a pumpkin overtone. I don't really get a bourbon scent, however. Well, hey guys, I just hopped out of the shower, came in tonight. I'm still making my way through these Sewn By Me products. This Beta Panthenol Repair Toner, you really don't need much. Um, this is okay, like it's not one that I would necessarily repurchase. I have been trying to use this, but as I said in my review, the packaging is so miserable. I don't know if you can tell, I'm about to hear, and it's so hard to get out of this of this thing because it the consistency is like of a thicker cream and you don't get anything up into the little vial you have to like knock the product around in order to get it to a place where it'll actually suction up so i've continued to be frustrated with that so i did you do you blah, blah, blah. i did use a little bit of that over this to um freshly cleanse skin and then i came on over with the repair cream. This I really like. I wanna finish, I wanna go through this Sunday Riley uh, Good Jeans. This is a lactic acid treatment. In my opinion, the one from The Ordinary is just as good, if not better. This one also has Arnica in it. Arnica is a botanic which you can become allergic to, but also some people believe that it's helpful for bruising. There's really no research on Arnica, truthfully, that, that's legitimate for really anything for the skin, but a lot of people use it like after a procedure, maybe thinking that it helps with bruising. But lactic acid, 
you don't need to shell out big bucks for it. It's not like a designer ingredient that needs a lot of bells and whistles. But I'm using it nonetheless, and I'm using it along with tretinoin, which if you're new to starting tretinoin or a retinoid, I don't recommend using it at the same time as a hydroxy acid, which I'm about to do now, because the irritation that you experience with retinoid in the beginning can be made much worse using it alongside other exfoliating acids. And exfoliating acids, their behavior in cosmetic products is a little bit unpredictable. Like you, you might get something that's more acting like a humectant, or you might get something that is more of a, a like robust exfoliant, depending on the formulation and like other ingredients that slow the penetration of the free acid. So for those reasons, you know, I think it's good to be conservative, when, especially when you're starting out retinol and not use them at the same time. But this has not been bothering me. You have a atopic dermatitis eczema or any kind of like dermatitis and you put, it comes in contact with lactic acid, man, it burns. Like lactic acid, like amlactin is really good for chronic eczema that's lichenified. It gets thickened, discolored, but acute, subacute eczema where it's open, raw, sore, or oozy and weepy, man, put lactic acid on that, it will burn and sting like none other. I mean, even, even basic moisturizers burn a lot for people who have eczema, like especially lotions. Ointments tend to be better tolerated. That's why another reason why petroleum jelly is frequently recommended for people who have atopic dermatitis. Petroleum jelly or, you know, a colloidal oatmeal product that's that's tends to be a lot easier to tolerate y'all i don't know what's going on with my hair like i mentioned i need a haircut duh but my hair has completely changed texture i mean i've always had wavy hair but it's like when when the little telogen hairs fall out it's like there's like like spiral going on which is not anything i had like i don't know five or six years ago, I will say. My hair has gotten progressively wavier over the years, and I don't know what is going on. Maybe I just have, you know, my hair stem cells are deciding to, to make proteins in a different way, and that's what's going on. I don't know. Thank God I'm not losing my hair, though, because that is distressing for people to go through. Speaking of which, um, you know, it's it's normal that you lose around 100 to 200 hairs a day, depending especially on how frequently you shampoo your hair. Like if you don't shampoo your hair that frequently, um, when you go to shampoo, you'll probably get a lot more um, hairs coming out because um, basically shampooing just kind of nudges them to come out. And those are, that's normal. Those are telogen hairs. And when you see those, they're gonna be replaced by another hair. Like that's a sign of, of the hair cycle. But um, sometimes at certain times of the year, you can have more shedding than others. For example, people tend to shed a lot more at the end of the summer um, and early into fall. And it's thought to be related to like some kind of evolutionary mechanism where we um, try and retain our hair throughout the sunnier months to keep us protected from the sun. Just a, just a theory, but yeah, you definitely, a lot of people do experience more shedding towards the end of summer and into early fall. Anyways, guys, I hope you enjoyed this vlog. If so, give it a thumbs up, share it with your friends, and as always, don't forget, sunscreen and subscribe. I'll talk to you guys tomorrow. Bye.